Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing uh, the opioid receptors. Okay, so we now want to discuss why uh, opioids such as morphine have such powerful analgesic effects. For, to do this, we need to look at uh, the ascending pain pathways, i.e. how uh, the signal of pain gets up to the brain. We also need to look at the uh, descending pathways, which regulate uh, how uh, pain passes up to the brain, basically. Uh, because all of this is going to be important in how opioids take their effect. Okay, right, so we'll start off with how uh, a painful stimulus in the periphery is going to be communicated up to the brain. Okay, so let's say we have our sight of, um, well, our sight of pain, basically. Okay, so let's say we have some sort of tissue damage. So maybe we have um, hurt ourselves and we've got some large bruise developing. Okay, so we've got our sight of pain here. Okay, so we'll just call this the sight of pain. Okay, and basically many different uh, molecules will be being produced here, and many of them will act on uh, neurons within that area uh, which transmit painful signals up to the brain. Okay, so you will have neurons in this area which have their um, endings in this area which will be activated by molecules that have been released at this site of pain. Okay, now there are two main types of pain neurons. Okay, there are A delta fibers and there are also C fibers. Okay, now A delta fibers are generally bigger than C fibers and they're generally myelinated. So, let's show both of them. So we'll have our C fiber here Okay, now it's unmyelinated, so I have to now show the A delta fiber being myelinated. Now, what does it mean to be myelinated? Well, it means that uh, the uh, conduction of the action potential will be much, much faster, basically, okay, because um, the action potential will be able to conduct through these portions of myelin just by uh, diffusion of the uh, sodium ions from one node of RAMVA to the other, rather than having to go through saltatory conduction basically all the way. Okay, so here comes this A delta fiber. So it will transmit its signals slightly faster than the C fibers which are unmyelinated. Okay, so both of these types of pain fiber will be activated by uh, molecular signals within the site of pain. Now, basically, we can define, we can um, split the perception of pain, the pain experience, into two portions, basically. We can split it into a first portion, okay, called first pain or primary pain, uh, which is the portion where uh, you've just hurt yourself, maybe. Maybe you've just cut yourself and you get a very, very sharp pain. Okay, and this doesn't last that long, okay? So this is the sharp pain. And this is occurring because all of the A delta fibers are now firing, okay? And the A delta fibers firing um, sends the signal to the brain of the sharp pain. That causes the experience of sharp pain, okay? Then we have this secondary pain, or second pain. And this is much duller. This is the sort of a key, uh, often sort of burning pain that takes on for that lasts for a much longer time, basically, and uh, you know lasts much uh, far beyond the original uh, damage that you did. Okay, and this is to tell the brain to not use the affected area, basically, to keep the affected area. Uh, safe from damage, basically. And this is because the C fibers are still firing. So basically, early on, when you've just damaged this tissue, you'll get the A delta fibers firing like mad, and those will create a very sharp pain up to the brain. Whereas, uh, in the aftermath, uh, basically, the C fibers will be firing, and those will create the dull um, painful experience that's secondary pain, basically. 
OK, so let's look at how both of these fibres then go into the spinal cord. OK, and from here on now, we'll just sort of look at one, basically. So we won't look at both because the pathway is exactly the same for both. So we'll continue on the A-delta fibre, basically. OK, so the A-delta fibre will come in through some sort of mixed spinal nerve. So let's say this is a mixed spinal nerve. OK, and then it will be split into uh, the ventral, well, the mixed spinal nerve will split into uh, the ventral root, let's say this is this one, okay, and uh, also the dorsal root. So let's show these. So this is the ventral root, and this is the dorsal root, okay, and basically spinal nerves uh, which emerge from, um, emerge from the spinal cord, this is the mixed spinal nerve here, basically uh, they are formed by the uh, joining of the dorsal root here uh, with the ventral root, basically. Okay, and the dorsal root carries the sensory fibers which are coming in, and the ventral root carries the motor fibers which are coming out. So this is the mixed spinal nerve here. Okay, right. And then what will happen is in the dorsal root you have a special sort of uh, swelling which is the dorsal root ganglion before it actually goes into the spinal cord. And then we'll have the ventral root coming out of the spinal cord here. Okay, so I'll show the spinal cord now. So the spinal cord is a sort of oval shape, like so. We'll have the uh, ventral sulcus here. And I'll try and make it as symmetrical as pro possible, like so. Okay, right. So this is our picture of the spinal cord. So let me now label everything up. So this swelling on the dorsal root, this is what's known as the dorsal root ganglion. And because I'm running out of space, I'll just abbreviate it to DRG and write it over here. It's called the dorsal because it's on the dorsal root. And then root, as I say, because it's on the dorsal root. And then ganglion. A ganglion is the name for a collection of neuronal cell bodies that is outside of the central nervous system. Okay, so when you have a collection of cell bodies that is either within the spinal cord or within the brain, it's not called a ganglion, it's called a nucleus. But when you have a collection of cell bodies that's outside of the spinal cord or the brain, that's called a ganglion. Okay? So, all of the sensory neurons that are coming in through the mixed spinal neuron, uh, nerve rather here, uh, will go down the dorsal root. So here comes our A delta fiber down the dorsal root. And basically it will have its cell body within the dorsal root ganglion here. And then it will send a central process into the spinal cord here. Okay, right. So now let's have a look at the anatomy of the spinal cord. So basically, the spinal cord can be divided into white matter and grey matter. Now, grey matter is where you've got neuronal cell bodies, and white matter is where you have the axons. Okay, so let's show this. So, the grey matter is shaped in a sort of uh, butterfly-like shape, okay? So it's like so. Okay, and basically, um, the posterior extensions of this grey matter, so this portion here and this portion here, are called the dorsal horns, okay? So I'll label this up on this side. So this is a dorsal horn here, okay? And uh, this here, this is the ventral horn, okay? So you have a dorsal horn and a ventral horn, and you have a ventral horn here and a dorsal horn here as well. Okay, right. So what's going to happen is these central processes coming in uh, from the A-delta neurons or the C-fibers, uh, those are going to come in and synapse on another neuron that is going to be within this grey matter. Now, the grey matter is divided up into certain portions. So firstly, right at the bottom, you actually don't have a portion of grey matter. That's the first thing to talk about. The grey matter actually starts just after a little portion here. So I just want to firstly talk about this little portion here, okay, which I'm colouring now in in pink. Okay, so this little portion in pink is known as Lizauer's tract, or the zone of Lizauer. Okay, but we'll call it Lizauer's tract. Okay, and basically what happens is 
the central process of the A delta neuron is coming in uh, from the dorsal root. Okay, what will now happen is it will split up. Okay, and it's better to show this looking from a different angle. At the moment, we're looking at a cross section. I want to now show you a picture where we're looking from the front. Okay, so we can actually see the um, length of the spinal cord. Okay, so we were looking at a cross section. Now I'm showing you the spinal cord as though we're just looking at it uh, from the front. Okay, right. So in comes this dorsal root here. Okay, so there's the dorsal root ganglion, let's say, and it's coming in, and here we'll have the ventral root as well. Basically, what happens is as this central process of this A-delta neuron comes in, it will split into many different portions, and these can go up to different levels, and they can enter the spinal cord at different levels. So basically, each um, pain neuron, whether it's an A-delta fiber or a C-fiber, as it enters the spinal cord, it will split into uh, many different uh, processes, basically. So it splits into different processes, and these different processes will either go up or down or maybe stay at the same level of the spinal cord so that you're getting input from this neuron at many different levels basically. Okay, now where do all of these processes go up and down? Well, that's within the Zauer's tract. Okay, so this is all occurring within the Zauer's tract and of course you have two of them, one on both sides and they're at the back basically, they're over here. Okay, behind the um, dorsal horn. Okay, so unfortunately I've got that arrow of the dorsal horn pointing to the Zauer's tract. This is the beginning of the dorsal horn here. So, basically the grey matter okay, of the spinal cord can be divided into uh, certain areas, okay, certain laminae as they're called. And this, these laminae are known as Rexed's laminae. So we're now going to discuss the division of the grey matter of the spinal cord into Rexed's laminae. Okay, so, basically, right at the centre of the spinal cord, just to start us off, here is the um, central canal, okay, so that's got cerebrospinal fluid running down it, and it's the continuation of the fourth ventricle, basically. Okay, in fact, the fourth ventricle is obviously the continuation of the third, and then the first and the second ventricle. So it's the continuation of the ventricular system. Okay, so this is the central, uh, whoops, central canal. Okay, so it's just full of a little fluid. It's not got uh, neurons within it. Okay, so what we're now going to do is look at the division of the grey matter of the spinal cord into these Rexed laminae. Okay, so there are ten separate Rexed laminae. So the first six are within the dorsal horn. So there's four, five, and six. Okay, so these are the first six Rexed laminae. So this one right at the back here is Rexed laminae one. The second one is Rexed laminae two, and then it goes on in a, the sort of logical order. So I'm just going to highlight them up just to sort of emphasize the point. Okay, and I should have drawn this picture bigger. This is Rexed laminae one that I've just colored in blue next to the Zauer's tract. Uh, Rexed laminae Laminae 2 is in orange, and this is working quite well. I might continue it on. Okay, Rexed Laminae 3 is in turquoise. Okay, now I'll put the colour coding down here. So we've got one in blue. So let me colour code that in blue. Okay, we've got two in orange, and I should just stress that the same is happening on the other side, okay? I'm only going to do one side, so you have Rexed laminees on both sides. You'll have one to ten for the uh, right-hand side, which we're drawing, the patient's right-hand the right side, and one for the left-hand side as well, because I'm assuming we're looking at this from above, basically. Okay, um, so, then we have Rexed laminee two, which is colour-coded orange. Rexed laminae 3 was coloured in turquoise. Okay, uh, then we continue on. Uh, so, Rexed laminae 4, I'm not going to do it in vivid purple, I need more colours. Okay, we'll have it in green here. Okay, and that one's gone a little bit wrong, it's overflowed into Rexed laminae uh, 5, but never mind. We'll just have to pick some um, strong colour for Rexed laminae 5. Okay, so that's Rexed Lamini 4. And generally, Rexed Lamini are named with Latin numbers, just to be pretentious. Oh, sorry, Roman numerals, rather. 
Okay, and then here is Rex at that many five here. Okay, in red. Like so. And then finally, Rex at that many six is in, I'll do it in vivid purple, is this one here. Okay, so that's Rex at that many one, two, three, four, five, and then finally six here. Okay, now let's go on. So the rest of the um, grey matter on this uh, right hand side still has to be divided up. So first I'm just going to chop it in half. So we're not going to touch the left hand side, we're only going to do Rex and Lamanese on the right hand side. So, uh, firstly, let's show Rex and Lamini, um 10, because that's quite a nice simple one to do. Basically, Rex and Lamini 10 is the portion that faces the other side of the grey matter. So this portion here is Rex and Lamini 10. Okay, so I'll put this here. And then what colour should I colour that one in? I'll do it in yellow. Okay, so this is Rex and Lamini 10. Okay, then we'll show Rex and Lamini 8, and then Rex and Lamini 9, and then basically all that's left is Rex and Lamini 7. Okay, so next up is Rex and Lamini 8, which goes in here. Okay, and we'll put this in pink, I think. Okay, so this is Rex and Lamini 8 like so. So 8 will fit in here. So that's Rex Adamini 8. And now we want Rex Adamini 9. Rex Adamini 9 is split into three little portions. One, two, three, like so. And we'll colour those in in turquoise again. I'm going to have to start using the same colours again because I've run out. Okay, so this is Rex Adamini 9. Uh, what's the Roman numeral for 9? Like this. Okay, and then finally, we have Rex at Lamini 7, which is everything left over. So I won't try and colour that in, because it will just ruin the picture. So all of this portion here is then Rex at Lamini 7. Right, so those are the uh, ways that the grey matter of the spinal cord is divided up into Rex at Lamini. Okay, so what was the point of discussing this? Well, basically, the... Um, processes that are coming in from the A delta fiber are coming into the Rex Ed Lamini and they're going to synapse in the Rex Ed Lamini. Now which Rex Ed Lamini are they going to synapse in? Well they're going to synapse within uh, the Rex Ed Lamini 1 and the Rex Ed Lamini 2 which are collectively called the substantia gelatinosa. Okay, so Rex Ed Lamini 1 and 2 collectively are called substantia gelatinosa, substantia gelatinosa. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.